The United States invests more than $140 billion each year in publicly funded research and development across all fields of science and engineering. Americans believe that this investment will help advance many widely shared values, what we are calling public values, such as improved health, a clean and safe environment, high quality jobs, and a militarily secure nation. Yet the connections between R&D investments and the achievement of public values is complex and has sometimes been called into question. We spend tens of billions of dollars in science to address difficult problems ranging from climate change to the toll of cancer to the need for good high paying jobs. But how do we ensure strong ties between the science we fund and the public values we expect this science to deliver? Public value mapping is a new approach for assessing the role of public values in science and for assessing science's capacity for achieving desired outcomes. The public values in science can be found in many ways and in many places. They can be found in government legislation, public opinion surveys, the strategic plans of an R&D agency, and even in the standard textbooks for a scientific field. In these and other sources, we can find clear statements about the public values that science is meant to serve. Identifying these value statements provides the starting place for PVM. But to judge whether public values are being met or are even likely to be achieved, we need assessment criteria. Economists and public policymakers use the idea of market failure to help justify public investments in science when private sector motivation is lacking. Researchers at CSPO have begun to develop criteria that indicate whether promised public values are being considered, let alone achieved. Public value mapping recognizes that assessing the public value of science is as important as assessing the economic value. To schematically illustrate the difference between science's contribution to the economy and to public values, we have developed the public value grid. The grid shows us that we can have market success accompanied by public value success, or by public value failure and we can have public value success at the same time as market success or market failure. To illustrate this point, let's look at the well-known case of AIDS drugs. After AIDS was identified in the early 1980s, a combination of publicly funded research and pharmaceutical R&D led to the increasingly effective treatments that helped forestall the progress of the disease. These drugs have been expensive, but in the U.S. and most affluent countries, most people infected by HIV can receive treatment. Market and public value successes have been achieved together. Yet, if one considers the global context, we can recognize that most people with HIV or AIDS in the world do not have access to therapies due to poverty and poorly developed public health infrastructures. So in this case, market success coexists with public value failure. The grid can also help illustrate how the public values served by science can evolve over time. Our study of earthquake hazard research shows that publicly funded science has, over a period of decades, become more valuable for society as research agendas have evolved in response to the needs of stakeholders. Here we have a situation that begins with both market and public value failure and evolves towards public value success even though conditions of market failure still exist. In a contrasting example, our PVM study of patents from publicly funded research reveals that some of the original public values that motivated patent policies have been lost in the effort to maximize economic values. Here we have a situation where R&D policies enhance market success but may create new public value failure. We thus have assessment criteria and a schematic way to show the relations between economic and public values but how can we assess the capacity to achieve public values? The linear model of science meant that scientific excellence was the only public value necessary to assure public benefits, because excellent science was assumed to lead automatically in the direction of public benefit. Today, we know the situation is much more complicated. Science is just one component of a complex system where many factors contribute to societal outcomes and where the public value of science depends on these other factors. Most research programs are justified by and associated with many different public values. By unraveling the relations among these diverse public values, we can begin to understand whether and how 
research programs are capable of supporting the values they are supposed to achieve. We have completed case studies in climate change science, patent policy, green chemistry, natural hazards research, nanotechnology-based cancer treatments, solar power, and more. There is still more work to be done to improve and test the method, but initial research suggests an important result. When the public values for a research area are shared among the many activities that connect science to public outcomes, or when multiple values can be related to one another in a logical way, connections between science and the achievement of public values are strong. Public value mapping can thus offer a way to assess and perhaps even anticipate the conditions where science is well situated to meet the desired public values.